Welcome back to our class. Let's continue our discussion for the key technical challenges to optical communication in the next decade. We will continue to discuss the sixth strength, whether OXC can implement ultra-low loss 128-dimensional wavelength switching. As we know, ultra-high speed is a major direction of optical network evolution. In the previous chapters, we have also introduced different ways to improve the system capacity for the optical networks, including improving the spectral efficiency, increasing the single wavelength rate, and expanding the spectrum to increase the number of channels. These are the ways to improve the line size capacity and bandwidth of the optical network. For optical networks, with the construction of three-dimensional backbone networks, the switching capacity of a single node needs to be improved in addition to the line size capacity. Some central switching nodes are responsible for grooming services in multiple directions. Services are groomed in wavelength pass-through mode. This imposes higher requirements on the optical layer grooming capability for the equipment. The OXC optical cross connection solution uses an ultra highly integrated optical layer architecture to meet the service grooming requirements at the central node. This solution is an important direction for future oriented optical network evolution. The evolution of optical layer grooming has gone through several phases. The early optical network architecture is simple. The number of service direction is small, and the service direction is fixed. Generally, the foldem architecture is enough. Wavelength services are groomed by manual fiber patch cords. Later, with the introduction of optical layer components such as Wavelength Selective Switch (WSS), optical layer grooming starts to use semi-automatic rodem. Pass-through services are groomed using WSS components, while the local level services are groomed using the manual fiber patch cord. After the ASAN architecture is introduced to optical networks, high reliability optical layer services require equipment to groom local services in various directions. CD and CDC rodem have become mainstream optical layer configuration. In recent years, the development of fully connected data centers and low latency private line services has led to the emergence of super nodes, and OXC solution has emerged. Rodem is an important step in optical layer network evolution. Understanding the Rodem is the prerequisite for mastering OXC solutions. Rodem features reconfigurable, dynamic configuration, and flexible adjustment. It appeared around the year 2000 and has been developing for 20 years. The initial stage was Rodem based on the Wavelength Blocker WB technology. This was first commercialized in 2001. A switch in the WB wavelength blocker can block a wavelength. This is two-dimensional. First, the optical splitter divides the optical input signals into two parts. One part is downloaded through the drop filter, and the other part is transmitted to the demultiplexer. The wavelength blocker module blocks the drop optical signal to implement the drop function. The add filter uploads local wavelengths to the coupler for coupling and output. In this way, the add and drop function is implemented. Around 2003, Rodem, based on PLC technology of planar optical waveguide loop appeared. PLC is an integrated circuit based on silicon process. The PLC-based Rodem integrates the demultiplexer, optical switch, variable optical attenuator, optical splitter, and multiplexer into one chip, which improves the integration and reduces the system cost. 
Later, WSS appeared, and Rodan entered a new phase. WSS is the wavelength selective switch. Its port structure is one in, K out, with one input port and K output ports. The WSS uses an optical switch array to add or drop wavelength signals to any direction for transmission. That is, based on WSS, any port assignment can be implemented with a high degree of freedom. Specifically, the internal structure of WSS is like this. After an optical wavelength is input through a collimating lens, the diffraction grating or an array waveguide grating, AWG, is used for filtering. And the different wavelengths are split, and then the light of each wavelength is sent to an optical switch. The optical switch refolds the specific light to the specific direction and removes the unwanted light. In this way, the wavelength is selected. Currently, the key technology of WSS lies in the optical switch solution. There are three mainstream WSS optical switch solutions, MEMS, LC, and LCOS. The MEMS consists of a micro mirror array, and each light wave corresponds to one micro mirror. When different voltages are applied to the micro reflector, the micro reflector is deflected by different angles, and incident light is reflected to different angles to implement light exchange. While the LC consists of a liquid crystal array and a crystal wedge, the liquid crystal array is used to control the polarization direction of the light waves. The wedge deflects light beams to different directions, thereby implement the optical exchange. A last and currently mainstream technology is the LCOS. LCOS controls phase delay by controlling a cell voltage of the LCOS, so as to form a blaze grating. By changing the period of the grating, a light beam can be diffracted to different angles. Thereby, it can implement the optical exchange. The LCOS solution is the third generation Rodem technology. The biggest difference between LCOS and the other two is that it can support flexible grid function. Variable channel width and super channel technologies are supported by LCOS. The Rodem technology has been popularized in optical networks. It can meet the requirements for flexible grooming of large granularity services at the optical layers. So if we already have Rodem, why we still need OXC? Let's take a look at some problems in the Rodem solution. Traditional Rodem use distributed board level optical cross connection. In one direction, multiple boards need to be configured, including the FIU board, OA board, optical monitoring board, and the most important WSS board. There are many internal fiber connections between these boards. In addition, wavelength grooming in different directions also requires fiber connections in different directions. In the early stage, the number of rodent sites in the direction is small and the number of fiber connection is small. In the later stage, the number of internal fiber connection increases exponentially with the increase of dimensions. This makes the ONM very difficult. OXC can solve this problem for the excessive and disordered internal fiber connections. OXC uses the system level optical cross connection to solidify fiber connections in different directions on the optical back plan. This can simplify the fiber connection. The optical back plan connects the optical tributary boards and optical line boards. All the modules in one direction on the line side are integrated into the same optical line board. The optical wavelength add and drop services are transmitted to the OXC through the optical tributary board and are groomed to the optical line boards in each direction.
Currently, 32 dimensional OXC devices has been widely deployed on carrier networks. Future emerging services will bring rapid growth of network data, and the switching capacity of data center nodes will continue to expand. For future optical networks, OXC need to evolve continuously to meet the requirements for ultra multidimensional service grooming on the ultra large scale nodes. We predict that some super nodes may emerge on carrier networks in the next decade. This requires the service scattering among 128 dimensions. That's a big number. There are still a big gap between the current OSC technology and this goal. First, we need to solve the problem of excessively large WSS injection loss. The injection loss of a single WSS should be reduced to less than 6 dB to improve the overall system performance so that we can extend the transmission distance and expand the OXC application range. In addition, the WSS wavelength switching rate needs to be increased to less than second level so that we can meet the requirements for fast service restoration. Last but not least, the OXC direction dimension is limited by materials and it is very difficult to improve the port dimension numbers. Currently, the research direction in the industry mainly focuses on material breakthrough, optical design breakthrough, and metamaterial breakthrough. For example, in 128 dimensions, the deflection angle may need to be reduced to 11 degrees from the perspective of optical design. This is also a big challenge in the coming OXC evolution. Finally, let's make a brief summary. In this chapter, we review the evolution of optical layer service grooming from Fodem, Rodem to OXC. To help you understand OXC, we review the evolution of Rodem and Rodem core components WSS. There are three types of WSS, MEMS, LCD, and LCOS. Currently, LCOS is the mainstream application. At last, we introduce OXC. Compared with Rodem, OXC can simplify the fiber connections in different directions and can improve the system integration and simplify the maintenance. We also look forward to the evolution direction of OXC and the difficulties encountered temporarily. That's what we have covered in this section. Next, let's use two questions to consolidate the contents of this section. First, it is a single choice question. Which of the following statements about optical layer evolution of WDM network is incorrect? The first three options are correct. Foldem is rigid and difficult to maintain and cannot meet the requirements of flexible network. This is obviously correct. B. Compare with common Rodem, CD Rodem adds the WSS board in the local dimension. Services in the local dimension can be groomed in any direction. Also correct. C. Compare with CD Rodem, CDC Rodem use the M cross N module in the local dimension and can schedule services in the local dimension without blocking. This also correct. D. Compare with traditional Rodem. OXC use the system level optical cross connection. It is not the board level, so D is not correct. Correct answer is A, B, C. Because we are asking which one is incorrect. So D is incorrect. We select D. The second question is a multi-choice question. Which of the following modules are integrated into the OXC optical line board? A, filter, B, OA. C, OSC, D, WSS, E, OSA. The OXC optical line board integrates the FIU, also called the filter, optical amplifier, optical supervisory channel, and the WSS module. So the correct answer is A, B, C, D. We don't have optical spectrum analyzer, so E we don't select. The answer is A, B, C, D. Well, that's all for this chapter.
Thank you.